Today on This Week in Startups, we'll chat with Shervin Pishavar, the founder of the Social Gaming Network. A Shark Tank caller gives us the ticket, and we'll say a few quick words about Quickie. All that and more right now on This Week in Startups. I could trip a referee, tell by my attitude that I most definitely from Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of This Week in Startups. It's episode number 82. 18 shows to 100. Can you believe it, Tyler? 18 more weeks. 18. Is that no. The, did that go, was that about right? Nine. The end of the year? Two, no, no, because we have two a week sometimes. So it's oh, right. probably oh, going right. to be like nine weeks, which means we, somewhere around Christmas or something, Thanksgiving. I guess we'll be uh, at the 100th show. I can't believe it. We're all learning so much. I have to tell you, every week, People say, why do you do this? You know, like, my God, you know, you're, you're so generous with your time and uh, the information. Uh, actually, I learn a lot every time I do the show. And today we got a great uh, guest. Shervin Pishavar is here. He was at TechCrunch 50, I don't know, last, last year. year. Last year. Uh, he also does a social gaming network. They've made millions, tens of millions of dollars doing all this uh, iPhone gaming. They were one of the early iPhone gaming companies. And uh, he's just a really intelligent guy. He runs the Open Angel Forum uh, for us up in Silicon Valley. And he's a prolific angel investor. Uh, he's in Reportive with me and Back Upify. And just really great, great entrepreneur. I'm really excited we finally got him on the program. Um, if you want to call into the show or be on Shark Tank, um, be on Ask Jason, any of those things, you just email askjason at thisweekend.com. And uh, who would you like to have us, who would you like to have on as a guest? I mean, that's a question Mark we ask. What's that? Mark Pincus. Mark Pincus, I know. I've got to get Mark to do it. He's my friend, too. Have, just, have we not had Alon on the show? We haven't had Alon Musk on the show either. You know what the thing is? Some of my guys who are good friends were really blown. I hate to, I hate to trouble them with having to do this. You know, it's like uh, they're so busy or whatever. But uh, I will definitely have both of them on the program. Mark Cuban, too, is another one. When the basketball season starts again, I'll get him to come by. Um, we have a big announcement. I wish I had that. Uh, oh, wait, we have the special announcement music. We should do the special announcement. I am so excited about this. MailChimp, MailChimp, MailChimp. I have been using MailChimp for the jasonnation.com email newsletter for the last couple of newsletters after I had my huge snafu with the listserv. I was an old school guy. Mm -hmm. I was using listserv. I thought that was good enough. Then my listserv borked and everybody started getting each other's messages. Very embarrassing for me. And I said, maybe this is a better solution. I did my research and I find MailChimp. I start using MailChimp and I fall in love with this product. I can see how many people open it. I can see which of the people with the social pro feature, mm -hmm. which people on my mailing use list are using Twitter, Facebook, Flickr, et cetera. Yeah. And then I can see if they're following me or not. Then with the plugin that's in Reportive, I can see when I'm exchanging emails with somebody, if they're a member of my list and if they've opened the last email. Yeah. So when I sent the last Joe Jimbo email, I can see the percentage open by day, by hour. I can see what people clicked on. It is so powerful and so easy to use that I, have, I haven't stopped thinking about this product since I got it. It's just a brilliant, brilliant product. I called the guy who's the CEO and I said, this is a true story, what's the status of the company? May I invest in it? And he said, uh, we're not looking for investors. That's when you always know that this company is yeah. doing great. Um, and a lot of people have used them already, but MailChimp.com uh, will let you send up to 1,000 subscribers absolutely free. So if you've got a small list, you have no excuse not to use it, but you can do beautiful templates and email. Uh, and they have a cool new feature, uh, which is the Faces Dash uh, board. When you look at your email list, you can see the people behind the addresses you're emailing. So when I look at my list and somebody complains or I see that they clicked on something, I see their face. And I go, I know that guy from a conference. Mm -hmm. It takes your mailing list into this black hole yep. and makes it into uh, a, a social network all of a sudden. And, and you can see the click-throughs. I, I just can't say a good, um, a, good, a good enough things about this company. It's just a product they fell in love with. And they got this whole chimp thing. They sent my daughter a hat, which is a monkey on the hat. It's like a, it's like a knit hat. And I have these pictures. I'll show it next week. Uh, but it's her favorite hat. Are you getting the tattoo? I, I, am, I am a male chimp <laughs> fanboy. And the fact that they're sponsoring the show is just awesome. It's so great that the, soul, the show is sold out. And I can have people on the show. Um, it was just products I love that we're proud of, you yeah. know. And I'm going to get that MailChimp CEO on the program. It is very simple to use and very powerful. And it's it's rare that you find something that useful and that simple. It's also cheap. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like they don't right. charge a right. lot because it's a software Good as a point. service. They're not like one of these companies gouging people. Right. Like you're not going to go there and be like, 
Oh, well, it, how much money do you have? No, it's, e it's easy to get the they ROI. They just give you credits. Yeah. And they just give you credits, and you just pay as you go. And, and, the, and, cheap. and last but not least, the service is actually really good in those rare events where you need a little extra hand holding the times that we've yeah. needed it. They've been off. Follow them on at MailChimp. They're right yeah. there, so you can just follow them. Uh, they've grown from 85,000 users to 450,000 in just one year. That says a lot. Um, let's go do the Shark Tank. Okay, on the line with us is Dylan. Uh, Dylan, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Salt Lake City. It's good to be on the show, Jason. Big fans, actually, uh, borderline super fans. To tell the oh, truth. borderline super fan. If you're, if you think that you're a super fan, you are a super fan. Oh, okay. That's the rule. Uh, and Decision has been made, I guess. Yes, and be proud about it. Uh, I love the fact that you have a beautiful background behind you, uh, some art or something there. Yeah, um, you know, we yeah, we have a real simple layout for our website too, and colors help it kind of stick in the mind. So yeah, and I see uh, Ticket Cake is the name of the website. Uh, and that's your company, and you know the rules of Shark Tank. You have 60 seconds, and then the chat room is going to rate you on two, um, two factors. How good you pitched, and how good your idea is. So, okay. are you ready? Absolutely. Okay, uh, Dylan, you are going to start your Shark Tank pitch in three, two, one. Our goal on TicketCake.com is to help under-promoted events sell more tickets by providing our users with a trackable link and rewarding the ones who spread the word. So for example, Jason, this might be kind of a touchy subject, but every time that you tweet about the TechCrunch conferences, you're helping your competitors sell more tickets. And don't you think it's a problem that no matter how many tickets you sell for Mike Arrington, that you don't make any money? Well, we do. And we've built a company focused on rewarding influential voices like you, or Lon, or Tyler, or Shervin, or anyone else who can bring attention to an event using social media on TicketCake.com or .co. Wow. I have to say, it's a 10. It's a 10 pitch. You've been watching the show. You obviously have <laughs> yeah. been watching the show. It's Super a ten. fans get a little bit of yeah. an extra boost. Uh, you there, get, right? It's a 10 pitch. You are an affiliate service for underperforming events, or even ones that are performing, I would guess. You help people uh, get rewards for promoting so the event. It, so if it, you are going to buy an event to, if you're going to buy a ticket to the launch conference on February 23rd or 24th, you can simply, 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 uh, if you don't want to pay the money yourself, just sell five tickets or 10 tickets if we give you a good enough affiliate. It was very exactly. clear what you and, did. And the benefit too is that um, we actually share our service fee revenue with the user. So it would not be coming out of you as the launch conference host. Mm. It would be coming out of us. So it has no bearing on how many tickets you have to give away or how much marketing money you have to put into it. Right. Uh, I love the idea. I've, I've been offered this before. When you have a big mailing list, uh, it's known. People come to you and say, hey, if people use the JSON list, list yeah. code or JSON code, we'll give you $50 for every ticket you sell. And I'm always like, nah, I don't want to do that. Because it just feels yeah. like, ah, it's just too much work. Uh, but this is a great idea. You, you've got the sort of cost per action. I would say also the idea is a 10. Um, this is a 10-10. Okay. It's a great idea, and it was a perfect pitch. 20 seconds less. This is yeah, shows under, people. Under 30 seconds. He did it he, basically in under 30 seconds. And, and people he, should watch back at the structure that he did it. He put in a short one and a half sentence description, yeah. and then quickly made it personal. Yep. He thought, this is what we do. So let me ask you this, Jason, like yep. engaged you. Engaged and then me. the engagement thing, he made it emotional. Yes. He drew in the like, you know, you're doing yeah. this and he got a little emotion yeah, out twist, of you. Yeah. And now you're fully yeah. peaked. You know, I'm you're, ready to kill him. Yeah. Uh, what did you give it? Give me your scores. Give me oh, your... the pitch is a 10. Idea wise, I'm going to give it nine. Uh, it's one that I would recommend, you know, people do. I am highly encouraging of it. Right. If, it's not. Um, it's not the biggest revolutionary idea. or yeah. that you know what? I, I will go back and say yeah. it's a ten nine for me too. I, this is a perfect example. The pitch was so good that I probably gave it an extra point a, in the idea yeah. column. But it, you're right. But he he can build off this idea but and make a real, it a ten. For a real young entrepreneur, you know. Is it, well, I don't know how young this guy is. ROI, how yeah. old are you, kid? Yeah, no. Uh, I'm 28. You're 28. Pretty good. It's your first company. It is. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, we've been doing web development, me and a partner, for a few years. But we were working with a lot of venues. And this was sort of the logical next step, and we decided to just take a break from that. And for the last six months, it's been 
our full-time job. So we have uh, just three people, two co-founders, and we're all 100% invested in uh, turning this into something amazing. Well, the, the scores couldn't be better in the chat room, and these are the most curmudgeonly hardcore people because they've seen the super fans are saying 10, 10, 10, 10, uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 9, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 9, 10. I mean, it's really that good. Uh, you should be very proud of yourself. If only we recorded the chat room, 10, 9, 10, 8. Uh, people said it was very, very clear. Twist Fanboy says very clear. Uh, Lon even says 10 out of 10. Uh, let me ask you this, what's the funding status of the company? Uh, the funding is right now whatever money we can save when we're eating top ramen. Uh, we are basically self bootstrapping this company and we're looking for investors. Uh, do you have an amount of money in mind? You know, I would be happy to talk to you about that at possibly the Open Angel Forum. Sounds good. Um, I think that you deserve to come to the Open Angel Forum, so I think I'm within my powers to give him how, a slot. How, how built out is it? Yeah, we have to see how built. How, is it built? The site's oh, built? Oh, yeah. Go, no, go check it out. Um, right now, so we're actually developers and designers and co-founders, so okay. we have built the website. It's on TicketCake.com. And uh, you can sign up and you can use the program. We, right now, are only doing a revenue share, but it's only a limitation of us being two engineers and the day only being 24 hours long. But in the future, we will be incorporating everything from game theory to uh, whatever it takes to make sure that our users feel rewarded. What is this with, what are you doing with Steve Aoki? Uh, this is one of the events that you can buy a ticket to. So you can also oh. come to this website and just purchase a ticket if you don't want to become an affiliate. But on the other hand, as soon as you're logged in, you always have the option to tell your friends you're going, which is sort of a natural human instinct for everybody to kind of share their events since it's a representation of themselves. And when they do it, they can literally get rewarded with money instead of just the attention they feel. I play poker with this guy. He's a really good DJ, Steve Aoki. You know oh, him? really? Yeah. yeah, I play poker. Yeah, he always he invites culture. me to his house for poker. Nice guy uh, here in LA. OK, uh, you did great. I think uh, pending Tyler's final stamp of approval, you're going to get into the Open Angel Forum, and we're going to raise you some money. Um, great. What, uh, what, what what's, town, which one's what, coming up? What town were you in? They're in Salt Lake. Um, yeah, we're in Salt Lake City. Probably the Seattle one coming up. We have Seattle coming. And we Not also have me. New York coming in Boston. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe you come to you, New York. New York would probably appreciate this too. Yeah. All right, here's what you do. You're going to email Crute, K R U T E, at Open Angel Forum. Uh, he's the general manager. Uh, and we're going to get you set up in one of these cities. And well done. I'm very proud of okay. you. You did great, uh, Dylan. And just one last thing too. I wanted sure. to uh, thank everybody in the chat room for rating us, but I also wanted to say that. Um, if they do download this podcast and listen to it later when it's not live, we're more than happy to have you put your ratings or comments about our company on our Twitter account, which is at this Ticket kid's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Uh, you're crushing you're it. You're a born marketer, yeah. You did a great job. Moving on. Uh, All right, well, good luck with the rest of the show, Jason. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I have to tell you, the only thing I can think of that would uh, also, you know, that would, that would eclipse that as a 10 out of 10 and would be an 11 out of 10, Trada. That was not your best segue. It wasn't. I was trying to get it there. Another 10? Yes. Another perfect 10? Trotta is a perfect yes. 10. Thank you. Uh, Trotta is a crowdsourced pay-per-click marketplace, leveraging the skills of more than 500. It's growing. Certified paid search experts. If you mention Twist, you will get $100 worth of pay-per-click marketing for every $1,000 you spend on Trotta. T-R-A-D-A. And the max you can do that with that bonus is $300, $3,000. Uh, if you are a paid search expert and you want to put your skills to work, just go to Trada and you can sign up there and make a little extra scratch. Uh, we're doing a special thing. We're going to give um, we're going to give somebody who thanks Trada or Mailchimp. So you just say thank you at Trada, thank you at Mailchimp. Uh, if you thank them right now on Twitter or anytime uh, the next week, we will. Uh, Put you into a drawing that this weekend is doing for a free iPad, and we're talking about a good iPad Holy with the three G. Yes, free iPad, free iPad. We really want you to tweet thank you to them, and every single person who hears my voice right now and appreciates the program. It really is important that you thank at Trotta right now. Uh, it takes you two seconds, and that's we don't charge you for the program, but this is what you will. Uh, this is what you pay. And we don't have those crazy sponsorship weeks like yeah <laughs> oh no can you imagine like tyler and i here like dragging it out like <laughs> ring 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 please call pay for lunch so, yeah support Salary. support your local podcast yes support your, no we don't do that we have great sponsors like trotta if you're buying pay-per-click advertising on your own you're missing out they could they'll do it much better than you will because these are the experts uh thank you thank you trotta and uh, thank you uh, to our users for retweeting and i had a friend of mine who's using trotta a uh, good friend of mine one of my investments mm -hmm. um 
mentioned last week on the program, mm -hmm. Smarty Pants, yeah. is using Trotta and having a wonderful experience. Yeah. And they found out about it on the program and they're enjoying it. So uh, well done. And do we have Shervin? 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 Is he there? Okay. Okay, we'll get Shervin on the line. Oh, I see Shervin. Shervin, my friend, how are you doing? Oh, he's got to put his headset on. I can see Shervin there. I don't hey. Know. Hey, oh my God, there he is. How are you doing, sir? Nice to see you. I'm good, how are you? I am great. How's everything going? Uh, you're in the Valley, I take it? You're at HQ? Yeah, I'm in H HQ. Wish, wish I was in LA with you. Um, it's, yeah, it's, we've, we've actually had a massive heat wave here. Did the heat wave make it up there or no? Yeah, it's been it's been pretty hot. I mean, summer is suddenly now, and you know, and end of September, early October. It's crazy. Global warming. Um, Shervin, uh, you're a great entrepreneur and obviously an angel investor. Uh, tell everybody uh, about uh, sort of what the Social Gaming Network is, and then we'll get into the angel investing. Yeah, uh, Social Gaming Network. I, I, I started uh, two years ago. Um, was one of the first social gaming companies, but we focused on mobile. I've been a big believer in mobile for over 10 years. Uh, I've done some mobile games before, uh, and when the App Store came out, I realized you know, that ultimately social mobile games would be bigger than anything that was happening on Facebook um, you know, over the arc of like five years. Um, so we started the company, and then David Z led our first round. We did our Series A. Jeff Bezos invested, um, Eric Schmidt invested, others, and so we're we're uh, you know just very quickly put out products on the iPhone, um, and we have about 25 million users, and then we're we just announced our you know uh, our mini tycoon social game platform, uh, so it'll be mini tycoon casino inspired by. All the uh, poker nights that you know we do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I thought you know it wouldn't be great to kind of do a farm bill like game, but you know where you can be a uh, casino tycoon building your own kind of Las Vegas empire. So uh, uh, sounds like a game I would like uh, and a job I would like. Um, <laughs> and and I guess the the model there is virtual currency. Yeah, it's all basically a harvest mechanic. Um, there's a wilt mechanic. Uh, as a collection mechanic, and it's all virtual goods. Um, and basically, you know, Apple took a little too long to allow in-app purchases in free apps. Um, it was the beginning of 2010 that really it was allowed on free free apps, and um, so it took a little while for the ecosystem to start scaling. But now, basically, the market looks very similar to what Facebook games were doing two years ago. So I think I think 2011 will be the equivalent of 2009. Uh, in terms of Facebook games, um, 2009 and 2011 will be the year that kind of you know, iPhone games, Android games really take off. And I know you're you're addicted to a number of uh, iPad games. I yeah. Saw I, <laughs> I, I, uh, I to the zombie. Um, I yeah, I, I, the zombie um, one I've been playing a lot, and the We Rule I play a lot. I you know anytime I'm like sitting on the couch watching a a game now, or I'm on the treadmill, I just I'll play some of these like little games. Um, you're but, incredibly good at it. I mean, you're yeah. so fast. It was, yeah. it was amazing. <laughs> now, yeah, we were on the flight. I was playing Plants vs. Zombies, which I basically solved. I wish Plants vs. Zombies would just come out with, like, part two and charge $10 for it and instantly buy it. Um, one thing that it was, was interesting was you started mentioning there's a harvest mechanic, there's a this mechanic, that mechanic. You mm. know how these games get people addicted. Walk us through what the addiction cycles are and what the mechanics are again because you went really fast there and I think people yeah. are really interested in that topic. So the harvest mechanic, if, if you're familiar with um, Farm Bill, for example, and these are pretty classic mechanics. It's not like anyone's invented anything new, but um, when you apply social to, you know, uh, to, to anything, it becomes, you know, even more, more interesting in terms of scale. So um, basically, uh, the harvest mechanic is is taking a you know let's say a plant and in and, and you know to buying the seed and then you know planting it in. Oops, looks like we lost them. But I think I get it. Planting the seed and then uh, having to um, grow the 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 uh, whatever it is the zombie or the plant and uh, yeah. The, I think what he's about to get into, which I find fascinating, is. The reason that women are so interested in these games, because ah. for years they couldn't figure out how to get women to play video games. Yeah, they couldn't. And they have a very nurturing, 
you know, uh -huh. nature to want to take care of things because it, uh, it's part of their psychology. Yeah. See, so. this is why I think you would be a good host of the program. You should host a This Week in <laughs> Startups at some point when I'm on vacation. Sorry about that, Shervin. Uh, it's okay. We were, we were hearing you talk about the harvest mechanic, and I, I think we yeah. get it. Um, Tyler brought an interesting point. Um, women are finally bring, being brought into the gaming world in, in a very major way because of this specific harv harvest mechanic. Is that true? Yeah, yeah women, uh, uh, women are a big uh, the, the demographic for, for these games. Um, so I think, you know, you know, the majority, you know, and by majority, like 55 to 60 percent of some of these games are, are women. Um, and, you know, so that's that's great. And it's also it's, it's opening up a whole new demographic of, of players um, that aren't typically playing other kinds of games. So um, that's why, you know, Zynga is as big as, as it is on, on Facebook. I mean, we've got, you know, we when we first all started, we said, look, this is, you know, there's going to be a billion dollar company coming out of this space because the scale of, of the growth is, is going to be pretty massive. Um, and then 2009, really, it, it just everything took off. Um, and now the mobile is going to is going to happen. But again, it's like you opened up a whole new generation and whole new demographics that typically weren't playing and transacting. And now they are um, at scale. And, you know, for me, mobile is more interesting uh, because it's always with you. So, you know, whether you've got your iPad at the airport like you did that day or um, you've got your, your, your iPhone or Android device, it's with you all the time. So, um, you know, I think that form factor will ultimately be the vast you know, majority of how we interact with, you know, not just games, but all of our, uh, you know, computing, certain you know, computing uh, interactions. So, why haven't, um, why haven't people built a lot of games that are cross-platform? Because this harvesting mechanic, it seems like I could play this on my desktop, my iPad, and my Android phone. Is it just too difficult of a task today? No, it's, it's possible. I, so um, one of our games was Skies of Glory, which is a uh, World War II flying game. It's really advanced, looks like a console quality game. And we launched it onto uh, iPhone, iPad, and then we had um, 3G, which was my, my vision was you should be able to be anywhere without a Wi-Fi connection and be able to play these games multiplayer live. So we did that, and then the next step was, you know, what if we could get Android players and iPhone players battling each other in the same environment? And that technically was a difficult thing to do, um, but we we did it. So we launched uh, Skies of Glory on Android on on iPhone. So now we have iPhone and Android pilots shooting each other down. Uh, which is really cool. So what you're touching on is the future of all games will be cross-platform and the majority of it will be mobile. Um, and it can happen now as so if we're doing it, but it, in terms of what I'm predicting is like with Mini Tycoon, we've built Mini Tycoon, we've taken a year to do it um, because we think that 2011 will will, will have uh, a farm bill moment on mobile. We'll have tens of millions of people playing one game and transacting millions of dollars a month on one game, um, and you know that's that's about to happen. It, it's, it's you know uh, so we've built many seconds specifically to to be that that platform. Do you think that there's going to be a burnout based on these sort of virtual things? Do people get burnt out of Farmville, Frontierville, and or is, are these dynamics so powerful that people will play the same flavor of game in 18 different metaphors over you know five years? No, I think I think the the creative, the well of creativity that has been now being tapped by entrepreneurs is just beginning. Uh, plus the, the 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 technology that we'll be able to, you know, mix and match between lo location-based games, augmented reality. I mean, we'll be we'll be able to you know put our phone up in the street and then see the characters, um, you know, that we're playing against right in our real world. We'll we'll have. The ability to you know look at your lawn and then see your farm right there with plants growing out of out of it in 3D over your real world um, or in a pot that's you know, sitting on your desk at the office and growing a plant. So I mean it's just it's just starting and and you know it's it's going to be a, you know ever more fun. So I, I I think we're only scratching the surface. Let's shift to angel investing for a minute. Um, yeah. 
you also angel invest pretty prolifically. Um, you help with the Open Angel Forum up there in the Valley. Uh, yeah. we've, we're in a couple of deals together, I think, Backup, if I'm reportive, a couple of others. Um, how, what's your philosophy? Do you have a, a premise in terms of angel investing? Do you have some theory or thesis that, that you go about it, or is it all gut? I may have lost him again, but I know he, uh, the company that just won the most recent TechCrunch tech, Disrupt. TechCrunch tech Disrupt. 50. He was, I mean, Disrupt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he. Uh, he was investor and advisor to Quickie. Yes. Q W I K I, which I, you know, actually didn't get a chance to look at, um, but uh, Quickie is a new way to. Um, uh, here it goes. It's a demo from TechCrunch. Um, I guess I could. Oh, they're showing a scene from that movie. I hate when people do that in, in the things when they show other movies. Hey. Hey. We were just looking at Quickie, um, and I was asking oh, you. That's, that's the shirt I'm wearing, too. Oh, very nice. So you're an angel in Quickie. <laughs> Tell us uh, first, before we get into Quickie, uh, what's your thesis yeah. of angel investing? How do you go about doing it? Yeah, so. Um, I think you and I share a lot of the same uh, values around investing. Basically, uh, there's a lot of gut involved in terms of the entrepreneur. We, at the end of the day, as angels, we, we're taking the most risk of, of anyone other than the entrepreneur, of course. Um, but in terms of investors, we're taking the most risk. And uh, we're going in at an early stage when it's in a, you know usually a, you know a couple people, the founders, and, and an idea and a dream and a vision. And so a lot of it is about investing in, it's, we're investing in people, right? Um, and so I think, you know, our instincts about people and, and, you know, whoever someone has that magic in them to, you know, to, to where you know, and I know Jason, you know this, that, you know, as entrepreneurs, uh, we have to be willing to look, uh, you know, look deaf in the face, right? I mean, it's like, yeah. you know, risk everything, risk your, everything you have, for your dream, and, and 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 even when you're in the middle of it, uh, when you know, you, you, and, and you can you can still uh, look at the risk and say, you know, I'm I'm willing to do this. To, the, the, that's a very rare trait, and I, I I I compare it to NBA players, right? Like you know, the, the percentage of people that you go on and actually make it into the NBA compared to how many people who are trying and dreaming about it, yeah, uh, is so small. And so you know, us, we're kind of like you know, NBA recruiters, like talent scouts, you're looking for that special thing inside of someone's heart and soul um, and saying, you know, is this person willing to, to go all the way? Are they willing to sacrifice? Are they willing to, you know, go through all of the pain and hardship, the blood, sweat and tears that it takes to build a great company? And I think over time, what I, you know, I've invested in over 30 startups so far and, you know, Quickie is a great example of this incredibly passionate team that has done it before. Uh, I mean, Dr. Louis Meunier is, is considered the father of internet search, um, and was the founder of Alta Vista, was at eBay, Google, and then Doug, the, the CEO, is this like incredibly passionate, you know, young entrepreneur who has this incredible vision, and they were so stealthy, and they, and the things they did, um, and the love they poured into this company and the product. Um, is amazing, and I think it's an archetype of what you and I always kind of, you know, uh, dream about in terms of finding a, a company that, to invest in. Um, in terms of other than that, which is I think is the human and more qualitative side. Uh, on the quantitative side, I think you know we also you know have you know have to have an ability to look peer into the future. I mean, when I first started out of Berkeley, I used to peer a little too far into the future. So that's why it's like you learn to calibrate and be like, okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dream about ideas that are 15 years away. Uh, or 10 years away, but I'll, I'll be able to be better in terms of calibrating and saying, okay, maybe the trend is two years away. And SGN was a good example of that. Um, but being able to look at it and say, okay, here's the trends. And for me, social search is one of those um, kind of investment philosophies that's saying, okay, social search is really, really interesting. And that's why I invested in Aardvark, uh, Quickie, uh, Cloud, um, and, and, you know, cloud services like Backupify, is a different category, and it's like, okay, well, that's also interesting. Um, and you know, coming out with those categories and those trends, and then looking for the entrepreneurs that fit that in terms of you know entrepreneurial 
got and also um, the, See, you, the, you got, the ability. You got the market, you're looking for a certain market where you think that it's going to grow, but it's not too far out so that you, you, you have a reasonable chance of catching the wave, but you need right. that manic um, CEO. Did you see the story in uh, the New York Times, I think it was last Sunday or the Sunday before, of like entrepreneur just manic enough or something? Uh, I didn't see it. But yeah, it's it pretty good. Uh, like balanced CEO versus um, a little bit manic. What is your philosophy? Do you think it's possible to be a well-balanced CEO, or do you think they all have to have this sort of edge that we see of intensity, of uh, unreasonableness? Yeah, I think I think you need to you need to have, you know the only balance is is you know being able to have a little bit of both. I mean, I think I think you know. Um, there is different philosophies, but I, I, you definitely need to be intense and passionate about your vision and not give up, right? Um, and that takes a certain bit of you know manic manic traits of like you know even when everything is pointing to no oh, this is absolutely impossible and you're the only one that's saying no actually I think it is possible um, that you know again like I said as entrepreneurs we we have a little bit of insanity we have to be crazy enough to think that we can make these impossible things real. Um, and you know, I, I, you know, a good example is again, Quickie is is something that you know when Doug was explaining it to people, I was one of the first people, you know, almost you know, a year and a half, two years ago, to see what he was talking about, and you know, and then and believe in it and get it. Uh, but many other people that saw it were like, uh, you know, I don't get it, right? You know, it's a, and you hear you, even when 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 you have something that magical. You know, and it looks so easy. A lot of people are like, "Oh, you know, that that's just all." You know, the text to speech over Wikipedia, and it's like, no, no, that's not. That's not. You know, it's someone like Marissa Meyer that you know sees it and you know tests it for an hour and saying, "Oh, there's something really here," and knows Louis Munier and knows the technology that it takes to to be able to build something like that. You know, that's. It, you know, it takes a little insanity to think that that's possible, and then actually to, to execute on that vision. Um, and uh, Angel Gate, we didn't get a chance to talk about on this program, I remember, but uh, just curious of your thoughts on the the sort of state of angel investing today. Leaving aside the Angel Gate controversy, it seems to have settled down. But is there an angel bubble now? Is that causing angels to panic and you know try to collude to keep things down? What what are your thoughts? Um, so, so my, my thoughts are, are simple. I think, uh, one, an angel is someone who's investing their own money. Uh -huh. okay? um, so I think, you know, uh, this, this term that's come out of super angel is doing a disservice to both the angels and the people who are being labeled as super angels. So a super angel is, is investing other people's money, and so they're a VC. Right, they're they're a small VC, right. and that's what they should be labeled. I think we need to stop using the term super angel to describe these smaller funds uh, between 10, 30 million, 40 million, etc. Um, and you know, and and I was saying that same thing, and then Matt Kohler got up and you know and said the same thing, and I thought his 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 points were really really on point. Um, but you know, angels to me are people who are investing and risking their own capital, um, and you know, uh, that's that's very simple to me. So I think we need to stop that that you know confusion um, and uh, and move forward from there. What about I, I, this sort of bubble or no bubble? Is there a huge bubble in valuations? I know I've seen from the Open Angel Forum. You know, just a year ago, people were, you know, I, I want a million to three million dollar valuation. And now it seems like everybody's in a three to six million dollar valuation range for these angel deals. Uh, are you seeing the same trend? Do you think there's a little bit of a bubble? Well, I mean, I'm hearing even worse than, you know, that it's, so there's 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 the three to six, and then there's the, the higher, but there's some that are now talking about thirty million dollar valuations, like two months after their. Uh, Y Combinator, um, seriously, I mean, wow. so it's kind of like, you know, um, so basically the, a bubble, if it is a bubble, will pop, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it just, you know, it, so if you're a sound investor and, and, you're, and you're making the right decisions, you're focusing on where you think the value is and where you can add value. And I think, you know, for us, it's, 
we want to we want to get involved with companies at the earliest stage possible and add value there so right. that everyone wins. Um, and that's that's where you create a great ecosystem. Uh, have to uh, have to agree with that. Um, you ever hear anybody ever collude in the angel space? I mean, that was a new one for me. I, I don't. I think it's so competitive the sort of deal space. Do you think there's a collusion issue? I know a lot of entrepreneurs are still wondering, like, oh, you, you and I invest in stuff. We've never yeah. discussed keeping a round down. No, uh, not at all. I mean, I basically, um, uh, I wasn't there. So I, yeah. I was invited, you weren't there. I, you know, so we weren't at all involved in this at all. So, um, uh, so I don't know exactly what was discussed. So I, I really can't comment on you know, what, what was it that they were talking about. The things that have you know come out is you know people I think were talking about you know standardizing documents and you know and structures for deals right so that yeah. there wasn't this kind of up up you know every single one being different and and so I think that was the the main focus how people handled it after the fact that's a that's a totally different discussion right and yeah in terms of, that was know, kind of and also when we had the um, uh, Open Angel Forum uh, at Wentz's place, it, it seemed like that discussion had happened as well. And I think it might have been Dave who actually brought it up, just how do we keep costs down on a legal basis and make deals more fluid, which is a virtuous, virtuous discussion to have. Mm -hmm. Reducing costs for startups and the angels flipping the bill for that, that's a good thing. Right, and I think, um, you know, Saka, Saka's points too were good. Um, and, you know, so, I, you know, look, at, at the end of the day, the number one focus should be on entrepreneurs and helping entrepreneurs pursue their dreams. And that's, you know, you and I are blessed to be in a position to be able to help. Um, but at the end of the day, the most important person is the founder and the entrepreneur. And, the, and as long as we focus on that, that's all that matters. And, and, um, and, you know, we're not in this, you know, I'm not in it, I know you're not in it. We're not in this for uh, money. Uh, to be honest with you, it's like the, 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 the passion and the love and the and the experience that I have, like you know, working with great entrepreneurs, that gives me a lot of personal joy. So the ROI on just joy is is it's enough. high. Like I don't have to make my money back for me to say that was really worth it because I I love working with great entrepreneurs and great ideas and bringing them to life, and that's all that counts. Yeah, I think that's the right attitude to go about it with. If you go about it with that attitude, you're probably going to win. You can tell uh, that you're being sincere as well. If, uh, when you mentioned you were talking about the guys at Quickie, the, yeah. the, the second guy, he, his face lit up yeah. just at the mention of his name. It's yeah, awesome. no, it's a, it's a rush to work with great entrepreneurs. There's no doubt. I mean, I got to tell you, like after Quickie won, we went to a sushi place. I, we went to um, this sushi place called Tsunami, and, and there was a Swedish engineer that Doug had recruited, um, and I was sitting across from them. And then the Swedish engineer is the one that was doing the iPad uh, demo that I captured on video. And, and, and he started like pouring out of his heart um, to Douglas, the founder and CEO. I got to get this right because it was so beautiful. He was saying, um, he was saying, Doug, thank you so much for getting me out of London. Thank you so much for bringing me here and making me a part of this. And, and thank you for getting me out of that you know, agency that I was in and, and, and everything you've promised me has come true. And I believe in this and I know we're gonna change why. And he was just like saying this in the middle of this uh, you know, sushi place and I was just like, and literally like I took my iPhone out. I was like, I have to capture part of this. I can't yeah. look away. But it was like the, that. What was all that it's about? That was it. That moment was what entrepreneurship is about: is making your dreams and your team's dreams come true and transforming their lives. And so you know, interestingly, somebody in the uh, in the chat room trying to be a little bit of a naysayer, Tyler. You, mm -hmm. you see the stuff there. Uh -huh. uh, oh my God! Everybody's in it for the return. Everybody's in for the return. I think I think what they don't realize is a guy like Shervin or a guy like myself. We've we've gotten enough return. We're CEOs of our own companies that are both doing extremely well. There's enough reward there. The, the angel investors I've met who I really sort of uh, have built good relationships with, like Shervin, are the ones who are so passionate that winning and being part of a winning team and an innovative team, it greatly outweighs the, the, any financial reward. If I could tell Shervin, you know, you could be part of a startup that makes 100x, but the day it gets bought, it gets shut down by the person who bought it. 
or you can make 50x, but it goes on to be a legendary service that delights customers and changes the world. Which one are you going to pick, Shervin? Yeah, we would take the 50x if it's if it's going to change the world. Exactly. Right? I mean, if, that's what people don't realize. It's, this is a. It's, in some ways, it's like a sport for guys like us. No. Yeah, I mean, the, the, that whole Yelp story, Yahoo story too, was exactly that too. It's like they had a higher offer to go to Yahoo, right, for 700 million versus 500 million from Google, but they wanted to take the lower amount, right? right. And, and so it's kind of like, that's a, that's an example of it. But I mean, at the end of the day, that's exactly right. Um, so. Shervin, the best way for somebody to pitch you, best way to reach you, what's your advice to some entrepreneur who's got a killer idea? Should they come to you and say, have coffee? Should they come to you with a business plan? Should they wait until they have their site built or they have mock-ups? Where do you like, when do you like to get a pitch and how do you like to get it? So I tell a story, I was, when I came out of Berkeley, I was starting my first company, I worked out of a garage for a year, I worked a night job to make enough money, and I um, was, was starting to um, you know, try to go raise money from investors. And I read this article, I think it was Fortune or Forbes, and it was about Jamie Dimon, who was uh, you know, number two at Citibank, and, and it was about the fact that Sandy Weil had kicked him out. And you know, after having built this you know, giant company, merger after merger, and this guy helped make that happen. And so it was a pretty dramatic story, but it was saying that you know, he's in this office now, he's taking a year off, he's kind of figuring out what he's gonna do. And I'm there like you know, 22 years old, I'm reading this article, I'm like, oh, you know, he, he, he's available. Like, I, I, I'm gonna call this guy. <laughs> he's like one of the most <laughs> powerful guys in finance. And I call 411 in New York, and I'm like, can I have the number for Jamie Dimon? And they're like, hold please. And the next thing I know, it's like, it, the phone's ringing. And, I, and uh, you know, I'm like, whoa. And, and, and the phone, you know, the, the, someone picks up the phone. I'm expecting a secretary, and you know, it's a guy's voice. I'm like, you know, uh, can I speak to Jamie Dimon? It's like, this is him. I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> what now? <laughs> what am I gonna do? And it was like that, you know. And, it was, and I knew I, I, I had 60 seconds, or else he was gonna hang up the phone. And, and I had to be on. And you have those moments in your life when you have that moment. You've got to speak from the heart. And when people speak from the heart and they 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 pour out their passion, no matter who you are, whether you're Bill Gates or Jamie Dimon or Jeff Bezos or whatever, um, it's the same same thing. They sense sincerity. And I think when, when people are in it for the right reasons, you can see that, and we all have a filter for that. And when we see someone that's really interesting, then we, we're attracted to that. And, you know, and uh, everyone's very busy, but, you know, no one's busy enough to pick up that phone or listen for 60 seconds and see if that's interesting. So my advice is reach out to me, reach out to Jason. Um, you know, you might catch people at a bad time. Try again. Don't give up. That's Awesome advice. Thank you, Sherman, for being on the program. Uh, and I will see you soon. Congratulations. All right. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Bye, sir. What a great guy. Yeah, I oh, really I like Sherman. that guy. And it's actually funny. People don't know the whole history of Sherman and I, but yes. Sherman, when he came. Oh, my gosh. He came down to oh pitch here, gosh. and he had a, had a rough day. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, I'm always you, I, known, think, I think you had, had a, you were at the end of a long day. I was day. at the end of a long a day. A very long and day. And he had been traveling all day. And he gave a pitch. Yes. And the pitch wasn't to my liking. And in the TechCrunch 50 days, yeah. you were there with my, by my side for all yes. uh, 140 companies yeah. uh, you know, that were involved. You can bring Lon in for the news, too, because uh, we're going to start that in a minute. Well, like, for count. But, uh, hey, I gave him a hard time. Yes. He fought yes. back. Yes. And then we fought together to make his presentation awesome. Yes. And it, it did turn out really great yes. at the end of the day. Yes. But it was, it was, yes. that was a dicey moment. That Let's was... bring Lon in for the news. <laughs> I think that's on tape somewhere, even. <laughs> Here, just got good news on my BlackBerry. Uh, always nice. Somebody accepted an offer. That's oh, great. really? Yeah, we have a big business development kind of situation going on. We just had a great uh, idea behind the scenes, actually. Oh, really? You're gonna, I think we're going to get you a This Week in Startup swear jar. So that when the crew has to go back and edit a swear, it's you a have dollar? To put, like a poker chip or something in there. Absolutely. And then, and then, then they go to the. 
Let's save it up, and then they get to go to lunch or something yeah, on May. Yeah, we'll treat everyone to the Bay Cities or something. All right, 10 bucks. Did I do something this episode? We just flagged you for something. Kenny just flagged you for something. Oh, I oops. don't know. Maybe you sort of said it, or you oh, said it. I don't oops. know. Uh, sorry about that, guys. But uh, yes, every time, I, every time I swear a $10 chip in the jar. $10 chip in the jar. And, and then, then we go from there. It goes to okay. the weekend Jason party. Okay, Jason swear jar. This weekend party. Uh, anything happen in the news this week? Uh, a couple things. Uh, we should talk about Quickie to start it off. I know you sure. and Sherbin had mentioned it early in the show. Uh, took the top prize at the TechCrunch Disrupt Conference, walking away with $50,000. The runners-up were Cloudflare, which is security and performance tools for small companies, and Pinger, which developed the popular free texting app, TextFree. Uh, Quickie is an information source that collects images, videos, maps, text, audio, all in a single interface. So you search for something and Quickie gives you a sort of a spoken multimedia guide to the topic. So yep. you get, you know, like Wikipedia, LinkedIn, Google, YouTube. Yeah. Um, so there was a bit of controversy about the selection. I feel like there always is with these kinds of conferences. Not really. Not, uh, no, actually, the first three years of Tech Crunch, everybody thought the person we picked was the right person. Okay. Yeah, um, but anyway, keep going. Well, uh, you know, they, they had a, they used it because they used a demo instead of an actual, they didn't have uh, the product. They used like a multimedia presentation, like this is what a quickie search would be like. And a lot of the other uh, companies there had the actual product. The goods. Right, they were using it on stage. Yeah, I would not give the award to somebody who didn't have the product ready. Right, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I thought. And interestingly, uh, it sort of ties in to another big thing this week, which was the BlackBerry playbook. They right. did their demo, and they also used just like screen captures, but no, they didn't have the hardware. Yeah. So it's sort of an ongoing thing. But anyway, uh, any thoughts on Quickie more generally? And do you ever think an algorithm is going to be able to give us like a narrative based on searches that would be useful? Um, I think people greatly under uh, overestimate the value of something like this. Um, you know, the, the fact is text and a keyboard or an iPad, it's a very efficient way to consume stuff. So while it, the design is better mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a nicer experience, I don't know that it does anything but slow you down. So when you think about information architecture, you have to think about what is, what is the architecture you're providing provide in addition. Right. So Google Maps, actually, when you look at a Google Map design and it puts you know Starbucks in seven locations, that's adding to the information design. You can zoom in, whatever. But when you take something like a Wikipedia page mm -hmm. and you put it into chunks and then you make it swish all around and make things bigger and smaller and narrate it, not actually as efficient as just having a big long Wikipedia page there that you can scroll. Right. And so what's happening, I think sometimes, and this is not to dig too quickly or anything like that, right. is that I think there's a big difference between what looks cool and what people will use. And Dig was famous for always having a really cool um, data visualization of their service. Right. You'd see the flowers, and the, they would get pollinated by the bees. It's like you know, I just I want to see the number go up. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand that a thousand digs is more than eight hundred digs. I don't need flowers pollinating in different sizes. So. Yeah. A lot of these things have a cool factor and a wow factor. I absolutely would not give it to a product that's not launched. And when Mike and I, this is, I mean, TechCrunch Disrupt is the TechCrunch 50 conference. We all know that. Um, and so basically when we did the conference together, um, I was insistent that people launch that day. And Mike was a little bit more lenient with that rule. And I didn't want vaporware. And he was a little more, you know, uh, letting people do canned stuff. So we had a little f fundamental difference about that. And so what I would always say is, which of these technologies will be, which of these companies will be a big company five years from now? That's what I, my main criteria was. And Mike mm -hmm. bought into that. That's why we picked Mint. That's why we picked Yammer. That's why I picked Red Beacon. Uh, and two of those three uh, have proved us right so far. And I think mm -hmm. Red Beacon will too. It's just a little sure. early for that. And Yammer's actually hitting its stride two years later. So I think Red Beacon probably will hit their stride this coming year. Um, so. Yeah, I would never have given it to somebody with vaporware. And actually, we did have a vaporware that was very wow that was exactly like this, which was Tonchi Dot. Mm -hmm. Ah, what and, a transition. And, you know, Tonchi Dot was a beautiful, you know, augmented reality, see what's on the walls and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I, I, it was definitely the sexiest presentation at that year's, would you say, Tyler? Most interesting. <laughs> Most interesting, right. It was and lively. I, I, it was I very lively. I feel like you, the, the, a little pragmatism is good. And, and, mm -hmm. But people got mad at us for the pragmatism when we selected Yammer and Red Beacon because those products were not sexy enough. So you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. If you pick something yeah, you, pragmatic. You were in a position where you wanted to be able to say two years later, look, look who won. Right. And you were right. Also known as integrity. Right. But you, you had something to prove early on. Yes. 10, 20 years out, you can start picking things to celebrate the uniqueness of this or that. But early yeah. on, you want to be like, look, we know how to pick what's yeah. going to well, be. Yeah, well, I mean, for the first year, we'll always be able to say we have right. Power Set and Mint. Right. And Yammer and Fitbit in the second right. year. You know, I was just, it, we, uh, uh, Mike, I think, had a looser 
uh, philosophy of it. You know, we, we, we fought but a also, lot But also, from what I understand, um, you know, the, it was a little more of the judging at the end there had more of an influence rather than just you and Mike. Yeah, in the old days, the way it worked was Mike put in 25000 I put in 25000 and we each got one vote, and we made ourselves agree. Mm -hmm. And all three years, we agreed. In all three years, we agreed blind. Um, because really? Because it was so obvious. We, would write wow. our, we wrote our top five on a piece of paper. He was in the room. Oh. Uh, and we turned it over, and mm -hmm. it would, it would be right there. I think we always assumed you were collaborating much no, more. No, oh. no, no. We would write it down. Uh, it would, basically, the way it worked was uh, my, the, my camp, me and Tyler, basically, and then Mike's camp, him and Heather, mm -hmm. would go in a room, and we'd just hash it out, we, we'd talk about which ones we like, but then we'd write down our top five, we turned it over. I think in the first year, uh, the top five, Mike and I had one, two, and three together, and four and five switched, or something to that effect. It's wow. like negligible. Uh, it's, it becomes very clear which of these companies is gonna be six. It was like very clear, Mint is awesome, Power Set is awesome, and I think it was Mint Power Set that year, yeah. uh, and Yammer Fitbit the year after. But even mm -hmm. Fitbit, we were very concerned that that product would not come out, right. and sure enough, they proved us right for a year and a half. It took two years to get it out, and now it's out, and it's great. But we were, I, I was like, I don't think we can really give best prize to a product that doesn't exist yet. Yeah, um, it's a great idea, but an idea and a product is Let's take different. the next story. All right, uh, we, you, you led into it so beautifully. Uh, you remember Tokyo-based augmented reality startup Tonshido yep. from TechCrunch50. Uh, they, they premiered their Sekia camera app. Yep. Uh, they've just closed a $12 million Series B round wow. for a variety of Japanese companies, including the country's second biggest telco, KDDI. Huh. Uh, they plan to use the money to expand their uh, app platform, so they'll open up the augmented reality system for third parties to create augmented reality games. They're calling it Solar Social Location Augmented Reality. Wow. So they have some video up. I mean, you can see, like, there's, you know, they'll put flowers or fish or something in the actual yeah. public, and you can catch the fish or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, what, what do you think about the direction they've gone in since TechCrunch, where, uh, you know, they launched? And is yeah. this where you expected them to be? Did you think they would get I to this I level? never expected gaming to be what it was. I thought it was going to be more for you're walking around and you get Wikipedia like information mm -hmm. or your friends' check ins at different places. So, you know, walking by a bar, I could see. Uh, a picture of Tyler like that was twice as big because he was inside and a picture of you that was half as big because you had been there in the last week mm -hmm. and then a tiny picture of myself because I was there last month, you know, or something to that effect. Um, but this is a brilliant way to go about it and it, something that would only, I'm interested to hear Tyler's perspective on it because it sounds like something that would only work in Japan, Tyler? It's very Japanese and for those that don't know, KDDI is much like the Verizon of Japan, so it's a huge endorsement to have KDDI in your mobile thing over there. Um, I've been following them since uh, the TC50, and they've been plugging away steadily. I mean, it, yeah. it, it had a humoristic, people chuckled initially. Yeah. They were not joking. Yeah. I mean, they had their heads down, and they've, it's been game on ever since then, and they've been making good progress. Um, so it doesn't, that part doesn't come as much of a surprise to me. Um, Japan would, without a doubt, be the first place that this stuff takes off, and then it's a question of will other places ad adopt it, and I imagine over time they will, um, but good for them. Yeah. And then you, the, I, I'm going to uh, debate or argue with your point you were talking about with Quickie and Tonchi Dot, which is uh, the usefulness, utility element yeah. is one thing, but there's a whole other element of just pure emotion of what happens when you interact with something. Sure. And I saw a demo of Quickie, and it you. I, I agree. It wasn't the most useful thing. Like I don't need to, uh, some yeah. the, the computer reading to me what's on the Wikipedia yeah. page. Whatever. Not exactly useful, but it, it, it elicited an emotional response sure. out of me, similar to the first time I used Google, similar to moments that don't happen that often. Right. Um, it definitely brings to mind, I mean, the one thing I'll say for it, in, in science fiction, especially from like the 80s, the 70s and 80s, there was always this like everybody has their electronic buddy or companion or interface that they're agent. constantly <laughs> interacting with, like, computer, what is, which direction yeah. do I go? And yeah, it like talks Star to Trek you, it and, presents you all yeah. the information you need, and this does feel like that. Like, I agree that that's the feeling you get when you watch the video is like, oh yeah, it's like my electronic assistant or whatever, but at the same time, I, I don't, it, it I'd almost, like to see it and play around. Very subtle, but you feel like an ego boost out of using it. Like mm -hmm. I have a cyber slave now of some kind. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I mean, if you can get the movie times and it's delivered to you from a little character, and they say, "Oh, Tyler San, you know, it's <laughs> a little, you know, Japanese maid. Yeah. What do they call those? The uh, those cafes, maid cafes. Maid cafe, yeah. Maid cafes. Yeah, you know, yeah. little maid pops up on your mm -hmm. iPhone and says, "Oh, you know, the the best mm -hmm. showing for you is this one. It's at the theater you like." 
or if you just like take your phone out and it's like here's the three theaters nearest to you and the mm -hmm. Google like very dry result. I think I don't need the French made Japanese you're thinking, anime character. You're thinking the, the Microsoft Clippy character. Yeah, yeah character. I'm sort Clippy. of like, like I don't know that I I just want the information to move on with my right. life. But maybe that's there's a demographic that doesn't. It's certainly getting much more visual. Like as sure. the yes. the interfaces are getting more visual, and I had a yeah. conversation with Marissa Mayer about this when we we're at, right before I dumped poured all drinks the, on her head, poured all the champagne over. <laughs> yeah. it. it was just glasses, uh, it was just empty yeah. glasses, of course. But uh, yeah, the the idea that it's moving more towards icons, the iPhone being yeah. very visual in its interface. Right. Uh, so next story. Uh, so Mark Hedlund wrote a lengthy blog post this week discussing his startup Wasabi yes. that shut down earlier this summer. It was similar in a lot of ways to Mint in that it helped people manage their sure. personal finances online. Uh, he says he was responding to speculation about why the company didn't work. He listed the reasons he thinks Mint ended up winning in the face-up between the two companies. Mint, of course, being purchased by the makers of Quicken for $170 million. Uh, so here's his list. Mint launched first. Wasabi didn't ever make money. Mint's a better name, and it was better designed, and Mint was viral, Wasabi wasn't. So what do you think of the list, and did he leave anything out? Launching a TechCrunch 50. Uh, <laughs> TechCrunch 40, actually, that year. Right, yeah. Um, 50, yeah. 50 grand didn't hurt. 50 grand didn't hurt. Oh, that year? Um, was yeah, that the first so year? 25 he, he, I think he, was the first year. you gotta, you, you got to tease those out and figure out which one is smoke and which one is actual fire. Mm -hmm. So product design and the name is part of product design. Uh, and virality, part of product design. So I just put all those under the product of better product. And launching early, that wouldn't matter if the product stuff was reversed. So it wouldn't matter who launched first if the product was, if the product situation was flipped. Uh, and then making money, also not necessarily that important in this day and age where there's unlimited supply. If the growth was there and Wasabi was growing and people believed in the vision and the product was better than Mint's mm -hmm. and Mint was ahead and Mint was first but the Wasabi product was better, they'd still invest in it the same way Facebook when they were a tenth the size or a fifth the size even of MySpace, where people were much more interested in investing and participating in the Facebook uh, ecosystem, investors, whatever, uh, and believed in it much more. So I think uh, this is very brave of him to do. I think it builds a lot of credibility for him. I'd like to have him on the program and actually talk about it. Mm -hmm. I As, actually, I, I screwed up when I was <coughs> reading the story. Those were the myths. Those were the reasons he, oh. the people think that it failed. He actually said... Oh, those seem like a pretty credible list. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, those, those, were the, those were the myths. B.R. Moore corrected me in the chat room, and I realize now, uh, yeah, I, I, I reversed the order. So oh, okay. his two explanations were he chose to work with Yodli, but uh, failed to find or make a replacement for them, and they were aggregating all of the financial data, so it was sort of a bad partnership. And then mm -hmm. his second reason is Mint focused on making the user do almost no work <coughs> at all, whereas Wasabi made the users enter in a lot more. Mint was more streamlined and took yeah. a lot of Okay, so that goes back to better product. Right. So I'd still say it's better product. I don't think the partnership really probably had that much to do with it. it was, it's, it's a product issue. Yes. And so as I get older in my career, get more experience, I realize product, 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 which is why you see me go crazy about things like, oh, lighting or sound uh, at this weekend or at Mahalo. Like, is this video, are we giving medical advice in the video? Or are we attributing it to WebMD? I had a big right, discussion yeah. today when somebody made a video for Mahalo that was like about a disease. And I was like, in this video that you made, you didn't say, you know, uh, who, you didn't cite medical information and facts. Always cited. The user mm -hmm. needs to know that stuff. And people are like, well, why, what are you worried about this level of nuance and detail? That's all you have. It's inches. Life is won and lost by those inches. Oh no, are you going the into The six OG? inches in front of your face. Here he goes. Now I can't <laughs> take them for you. You got it. Look at the guy next to you. <laughs> But it is a game play of inches. Clip. It is. It is. At, at the end of the show, end of the we'll show, play, the, play clip, the clip, but don't include it in the... Uh, it is a game of inches, and it's a game of pixels. Pixel by pixel is how you win on the internet. Feature by feature, content by content, show by show, advertiser by advertiser, great hire by great hire, great partnership, great salesperson, great sales, all of those details, speed of your site. It's all it's just a little bit of inches, and who fights to make it a little faster and a little better? Any given startup. Any given startup. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We should do a little parody. Totally. That's great. That's we should really totally great. do it. Any given <laughs> startup. Any given startup. startup. Yeah, I like that. Uh, Tyler, also, anything? Oh, sorry. Um, to add to this discussion of failing. Mm. 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 No. 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 One more uh, thing for the blog post I think is Zero insights. No. He's saying, I, in this case, 
Mint won at making users happy quickly, and both Mint and Wasabi failed at actually helping people. No one, in my view, solved the financial problems of consumers. So that's an interesting. Uh, I think what he's. I think what he's saying in that regard is, th both of them were not just designed to be an aggregator of all this information. Right. They both did that, depending on who you talk to, beautifully. Mint obviously very beautifully, but when Mint. What Mint was supposed to do is supposed to take all of your funding and stuff and say, you know what, this piece of it, you should have this credit card and you should have this savings account and you could save money if you, you know, use direct deposits. You know, it's supposed to give you some financial advice. Right. And I, he's probably right in that regard that it's not, you it's know. It's not that next level. It's, it's doing a good job of yeah. displaying it all, but in terms of telling you there's savvy a big, there's a There's a big making. difference between aggregation and display of information and actual wisdom and knowledge. Yes. Humans tend to do pretty good at the wisdom knowledge thing, which is why with Mahalo, the curated, you know, content, curated search, question and answer, there's got to be a human element to tell you, by the way, if you're going to make, uh, you know, uh, uh, what's a beverage, you know, a pina colada, you really want to get the actual real coconut and scrub that stuff out of the shell and put it in there. Uh, and I had pina colada like that and it was unbelievable. Mm. Sounds good. Yeah, it's very nice. We should have pina colada next time. Yeah, maybe with the, the, the swear jar. We'll take some. Swear jar, get some pina we'll Put it towards the deck. Or That's F and BS. <laughs> what if I say something like that? Do I have to put 20 in? Yeah. Oh. Two swears. That's two edits. Ooh, last story. Uh, okay, I. Oh, geez. I'll give you a choice. We can talk about Amazon, maybe purchasing by VIP. We can talk about the social network, the movie, or we can talk about Microsoft tablets. Microsoft tablets, social network movie, or Amazon. Mm, social network movie. All right. So course, going, I'm going to go see it tonight. So. Right. That's why I thought it would be yeah. apropos to talk about it. Big movie about Mark Zuckerberg. It opens today. Uh, I think some of us are even going to go see it. Uh, interesting little tidbit that I thought was uh, fun. Uh, screenwriter Aaron Sorkin, he wanted to direct the film also, by the way, got some inside scoop on the Harvard clubs portrayed in the film from actress Natalie Portman, mm. who attended Harvard from 99 to 2003 and dated a member of the porcelain club that's depicted in the film. So my real question to you is, how accurate... Is this the club where everybody's taking ecstasy or something or doing drugs? No, no, it's the Harvard clubs. Did you read oh. Accidental... If you read yeah, Accidental yeah. Billionaires, yeah. the book, it's all about getting into these exclusive social uh, yeah, clubs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Eduardo Saverin was all obsessed with getting yeah, yeah, into the porcelain yeah. club because that's where yeah, Watch the club. kids go, yeah. yeah. Uh, so do you think it's good or bad for tech entrepreneurs and startups in general to be depicted in a mainstream Hollywood film? Because it's a little, it seems like this one's a little negative, but overall it's sort of making, being a tech entrepreneur seem very grandiose, very uh, epic. Movies simply reflect the world uh, that the people who watch them live in. Mm -hmm. And so during the cyber era, we had Johnny Mnemonic, and we had mm. Duplicity, Right, was it Duplicity? Was the other one with a person living in the virtual? Oh no! It was, uh, yeah. Oh, what was it? It was uh, who was the guy from Gladiator? Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington and, and Russell Crowe. Crow. Virtuosity. Out. Virtuosity. Yes. You can't leave out Tron though. As a well, that was the eighties. Yeah. So Tron but as a was the eighties. Of technology. Yes. War games. Yeah. So you, you, Strange you, Days also has that yes. where you jack in. Yeah. You know, so you, yeah. you you had in the eighties the hacking culture in uh, war games. In the 90s, you had cyber culture manifested in Johnny Mnemonic and Strange Days, which actually, Catherine Bigelow, awesome film, very, under, movie. very underrated. It's a great movie. Uh, and you also had The Net with Sandra Bullock, which is terrible. <laughs> it's really and, bad. And, he, and then you had Hackers, actually, which was pretty good. Yeah, Existence, great uh, call out from Nuna Mai in the chat room. Existence. David Cronenberg film. Ah, and what was that about? Uh, it's a, Jennifer Jason Lee is a game designer, but in a future where games are actually vert, like you put a helmet on uh -huh, yeah, yeah. and you go into yes. the game. Yeah. And so, you know, she's playing the game and then somebody is like invading the game, but it's got that total recall. Like, is this part of the game or is it yeah, really the game Ender's is game. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Um, so anyway, it's just a reflection. So this is just a reflection of the fact that social networks, specifically Facebook, uh, and the concept of uh, becoming a billionaire at such a young age uh, in such a salacious way, uh, debatable by some, but probably not by most. Um, it's a pretty good story. I mean, let's leave it at that. If it gets kids to inspire to do startups in the right sort of way, fantastic, awesome. Uh, if I wrote a screenplay 20 years ago and said it's a story of a kid who becomes a billionaire at 23, they would laugh you out of the room. And I'm predicting now there'll be a billionaire under the age of 18 in the next 20 years. Mm. 18-year-old billionaire. The Somebody will start a company at 15 and be a billionaire, 18, 19. They'll be a teenage billionaire. That's actually a great That's movie. That's a great name for the screenplay is teenage. the Teenage Billionaire. Okay, uh, that is my movie. Do not... So, <laughs> can somebody on my team register teenagebillionaire.com? Somebody tell Kurt right now. Go, go, go. Teenage Billionaire. I like it. Oh, my God. T 
TV show. Want to write it? I'm in. Let's write a pilot. We'll do Teenage Billionaire. Uh, so me and you. Yeah, we'll write the pilot. Nine, I've, I've written a we'll, pilot. We'll be partners. No Tyler. No, of course not. Eighty twenty. <laughs> we could write Teen Billionaire. We could write Teen Billionaire. Teen Billionaire is a genius idea for a television it's like, show. It's like Richie Rich, but yes. ten years older. That's right. See, you finally got your taste. I say <laughs> we write a treatment. Right. Yeah. What would it take right. to write a treatment? Like, so you need what five, would ten pages. We come up with, th with three acts. The act breaks. Teenage Billionaire. We'll I'm going to do it. I'm going to write that right now. I'm gonna, we're going to write <laughs> that. So Teenage Billionaire, the first episode, he, he, uh, it's summer camp. Right. So... All of a sudden, they're at summer camp. What's well, an hour-long dramatic series? I'm assuming. Absolutely. Right. It's it's sort of like Doogie, it's Doogie Hauser. Right. It's a Doogie but, Hauser you know, s thing. Older, where, a little older, older. Yeah. So um, there's a bunch of kids at summer camp. They're canoeing or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, helicopter comes flying in, lands in the middle of summer camp, and he gets out with his assistant, like his Pepper Potts. Right. And he's like, I want to be booked for uh, canoeing at three. <laughs> and uh, can you? So the pilot, he's already a billionaire. We're not seeing him become well, that, a billionaire. Well, he'll. Well, actually, that's it. Because then, then it will flash back to how he became a billionaire. Or you can stretch that out for the whole season. You're always doing flashbacks. Wondering to how he became his a billionaire. Path to becoming a oh, billionaire. Oh, it's so <laughs> great. Thank <laughs> you, thank you, so, DNA someone, mail. Someone's in the process of buying the domain name right now. Thank yeah. you. Well, well, Jason and I'm realizing I need to keep GoDaddy open during yes, the yes, show yes, yes. for absolutely about the tenth uh, time that happened. That was a great idea, almost as good of an idea as DNA mail, DNA mail. Mm. Everybody loves DNA mail. They help you succeed in business by moving your mail to the cloud, which is where you need to put it. You can put your Google Apps up there, your Microsoft Exchange hosted. It's free activation. It's free setup. It's free 24 by 7 support. It's right here from Lo in Los Angeles with people who care. You can get them on the phone, which is critical. Yeah, yeah you can get free email service, but you, if something goes wrong in your mission critical applications, your, your clients, whatever. I mean, what are you going to do? You need 24-hour you need support. Let's, let's be honest. 99.9% .9 uptime guarantee. Don't let your business suffer from subpar communication. Sign up today and take advantage of their 30-day free trial. If you don't follow DNA Mail, do so right now. Just go to Twitter and follow at DNA Mail. And if you thank them right now, I'm going to pick somebody who thanks them. And the This Weekend Network, will, uh, between now and next week, is going to give somebody an um, iPad. iPad. So uh, thank you to DNA Mail, the longest running sponsor. And we're going to have some DNA Mail swag at some point. Of course. And DNA Mail swag is coming, uh, and we're going to give that to you. Uh, Lon, thank you for the news. Tyler, right, thank yeah. you for another Zero epi Inside episode. No, you were good, though. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Adtrada. Thanks, Ad MailChimp. Uh, how's the startup going? Okay? Yeah. All right, good. Uh, and later today... Mobile. We've got mobile. This Week in Mobile coming up at uh, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. And thank you... Um, Shervin. Shervin. What a great job. We'll see everybody next... Oh, and if you want to win another iPad, we have two iPads away. For, uh, take the survey. Take the survey at thisweekend.com. You go to thisweekend.com. For There's advertisers. A on the front page. Take the survey. We want, to give, we want to get some more demographics. We want to know who you guys are. Who's watching who the watching show. watching and enjoying our shows. See you next time on This Week in Startups. Spiked out, I could trip a referee Tell by my attitude that I most definitely leave from